Can God take two broken people and make something beautiful? Today we're going to talk to a couple who's been married more than 50 years about the struggles and joys of pursuing a biblical marriage. Welcome to Talk Truth, a McGregor podcast, where we dive into scripture, gain insight from community, and biblically answer life questions. Talk Truth will answer life questions submitted by our listeners every other week. If you have a question for Talk Truth, you could submit your question through our website. I'm your host, Danielle Flood. Let's open the word, gather together, and talk some truth. Today, I'm joined by Harold and Jeanette Flood, my in-laws, and we're going to talk about marriages. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Hey. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad, for being here, joining me. Um, We're going to pray as we begin. Dear Father God, what an incredible institution you made, marriages that show us how selfless you were and how much you love us. We offer this conversation to you and pray that those listening would be encouraged and marriages would be strengthened. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I am so grateful to have you both on the podcast. This is going to be fun. First, I'd love to let our listeners get to know you a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you met? Yes, we met in high school in our geometry class, and I spied her (laughs) early on. He stalked me. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So um, I knew she was a Christian. I did a little background check on her. Mm -hmm. And uh, thought, well, you know, and she's kind of cute. So uh, I bought her a box of candy for Valentine's Day. Which I took took home. (laughs) All kinds of questions. Oh, I (laughs) bet. Who was that from? I said, well, somebody I really don't know very well, but Mm -hmm. he gave it to me in my locker. (laughs) So what grade was this? I was a... Junior, Junior, and I was a sophomore. Yay. Oh, that's fun. And how long have you been married now? 50 years last summer. Yay. Well, that was fun. Uh, we traveled up to Michigan to have a big celebration with all the family, and it's been a joy to be your daughter-in-law and join that family. But we're going to talk both about like the joys, the struggles, um, what you've gained from your faith along the way. So let's start with the early years. What are some of the things that challenged you in those early years of marriage? I think possibly I could say it would be um, personalities that were very different. Mm-hmm. So it was something to get used to somebody else that you don't really always connect with because it's different than the way you would talk or different than the way you might uh, view things. So mm-hmm. We really came from very different families. That's true. Um, Jeanette came from a, a very Christian family with the church every week and everything. My family did not. Uh, mm-hmm. Although as young as kids and stuff, we rode the bus to church, mm-hmm. gave mom and dad some time off <laughs> on Sunday. We were gone, and then brought dropped back off on the bus. So bus ministry was uh, real key in, in my early growing up. Yeah. Um, and mom came to church Christmas and Easter, and that was it. Dad never did. Mm-hmm. So you guys met in high school and then went through college years kind of dating. Mm-hmm. Yes. And got married pretty young. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was still a senior in college, and Jeanette had uh, graduated and was <laughs> in school um, close by to where the college is because she got a job close by, and so we got married that summer, and then the rest is history. So, <laughs> so as you, I mean, there have to be a ton of stages of your marriage, you know, maybe different external influences or different, you know, internal stages. Even I, in our marriage, we've been married 15 years now. I see the seasons, you know, those early years and then (coughs) maybe a little later. Um, Tell me a story about something else where you were just either learning to love each other or learning how God was calling you to be a husband or a wife. Hmm. Well, we were in the same college. Mm -hmm. 
we were um, we had a time when we were both uh, when we weren't in college came back we were both at different churches mm -hmm. uh, trying to be at this church and this church together you know and it wasn't really working so we had to choose a church that um, was asking us to help mm -hmm. in the youth group so that's what we did and that was uh, a big change for us to what go go to a whole new situation with the church right and uh, we we do a lot of things together as far as with the youth group and also with camp ministry and uh, just volunteering and doing things for other people and I think the more that we probably concentrated on other people mm -hmm. it was just us working together to do that right. so. yeah so that youth group time was a new church but you were getting <coughs> to serve together and kind of focus on that youth right. group right um how many years were you there well it's the church i grew up in okay so we were we were in we moved back to the same town we both mm -hmm. lived in and uh so but we were going like to my church in the morning and her church at night or back and forth and and so we had to in that first year we came back we were actually employed by our church to do the cleaning and mow the lawn and do all that and we lived in an apartment that belonged to the church so it was much easier to to settle on that church but and, and it was a much smaller church so there was a lot more need there right so that's how we and, and that was a that was a hard hard decision to take her away from her family at the other church, mm -hmm. even though it was only seven miles away, but still. Uh, still investing. Yes. Kind of more into a new church. And we love those right. other people right. too. Right. You know? So. Yeah. So, how have you seen your relationship change over the years? Well, I think when you live together as many years as you have, you just get comfortable living yeah. with each other and you get to know each other's likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. So you try to please the other person. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a I lot of it. I think mm -hmm. we work together really well. So right. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it doesn't mean we don't have <laughs> things that bug us, you yeah. know, but it doesn't, it's, it's never been anything that's gone overnight and the next day you're still upset about anything. It just no. has never been that way. Yeah, for us, we really uh, early on decided that we would try to resolve things and, mm -hmm. and not let little things uh, get in the way. Uh, yeah, because they can. Yeah, and I think we watched other marriages and new troubles that some were having. Yeah, and decided we're not going to go there. We're not going to be that way right. and do those kinds of things because right. that's just not easy to hear or to live with. Right. We don't right. want that to be part of our life. Mm -hmm. I want to read some of Romans 12 because I was challenged the other day. This is for any Christian, but to look at it in the light of marriage, I was like, oh, yes, this is very true. Um, Romans 12, 9 through 20. Uh, Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one for evil but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight to all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. And then do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I was looking at that and saw some of those honoring your spouse, being able to look past some of those challenges and just 
to say this is maybe a disagreement or something, but it's it's not the biggest deal. And I've seen some of those in your life, and I you're passing that on to the next generation. What you said about seeing people's marriages around, like, you know, others look at you and Nate and I are looking at you and saying, how can, you know, we take those examples and then pass them on to our kids? So be encouraged. And then the next question, what do you wish you could change? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm not sure we could come up with something that we really would like to change. Mm -hmm. Because I think that as we maybe had difficulties or something along the way, we've taken care of it then. So it's not like there's something now that we wish we we could do differently right. than what we are. That's a good place to be. One of the things that I, I do is I, I look back at what has happened over the last 50 years, and, and there are some keystone things that have happened, and at the time, I would have changed them big time mm. and and thought, wow, I would really would have rather it didn't go my way. Right. A few years later, you look back and you go, God knew what he was doing. Because yeah. if it had gone my way, it probably wouldn't have come out as well as it did. Mm-hmm. Um, and things that I thought were important turned out to be not quite so important. Mm. Sometimes even jobs mm. or my aspirations of what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I look back and I go, wow, God blessed us richly. Mm-hmm. I think mostly because we decided up front that whatever God wanted us to do, let's let's try to do it. Yeah. We've always had good influences mm. as yeah. far as parents. What a blessing. Uh, church friends and watching their example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're encouraging us. So it's uh, been sort of an easy path, actually. Mm. Um, we find each other dependable. Yeah. We don't mistrust each other in no. any way. And um, <clears throat> we really enjoy helping other people. And we've had people help us, so we like to help right. them, too. Yeah. And uh, it's just so many ways that you can do that. So. We do that through volunteer work, Mm -hmm. and both here and at home, and church work and getting to know people that are encouraging to us, so. Yeah, you really get to serve with your best friend. Right, right. 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 Yeah. So I asked permission of another couple we know to share some of their story and like maybe, you know, people aren't always so blessed and they don't have those, mostly easy roads. Can you share a little bit about Kim and Rick and their their story? Sure, yeah, um, yeah I know it very well. Um, I was uh, able to walk Kim down the aisle because my father had passed away, mm-hmm. and so I ended up giving her away for the first wedding uh, mm-hmm. that they had. So Kim's your sister. Kim's my sister. Yes. Married my best friend now, brother, brother-in-law, mm-hmm. you know, and, but, uh, they were very, very young, right mm-hmm. out of high school, and uh, they grew apart after a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had very different interests, uh, and they actually ended up in a divorce, mm-hmm. which just broke my heart. Sure. Um, and I tried to stay real good friends with, with Rick mm-hmm. all through that time. I remember my pastor coming to me and talking to me about it, mm. and he says, you know, Rick really needs your help. Okay. I said, well, yeah, I, mean, he, I, I love Rick, I, I, I did before. But, uh, so, but for a couple of years, it was pretty tough, but they were both miserable, mm-hmm. both very miserable. Yeah. And uh, they both got invited to a, um, a conference that they'd both been to before, and we'd been to. We, it was one a conference that went around the country. Yeah. Um, and they, as they were both invited, but didn't know the other one was uh, going to attend. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember if that was on purpose by some people or just God's purpose along yeah. the line. But in hearing that conference and all that was going on with it, 
the two of them started to talk to each other and uh, got back together, started dating each other mm -hmm. um, after they'd been divorced for two years. Mm -hmm. And then I forget how long it was, probably another, about a year, I think. I would have to go back and look. Um, they got remarried mm -hmm. and I was able to go and be there again for oh, that goodness. marriage. And uh, they are the, absolutely two of our best friends. Yeah, they yeah. have kids all they the same are. age as our kids. Mm -hmm. We uh, are in contact with each other yeah. quite often. We try to do things together. But their, mar their marriage now is so solid. Mm -hmm. They were are able to um, be ministering to other people that some have gone through the same thing or are going through divorce and thing, and, mm -hmm. and they just have an ability now to um, to see things different than many of us do, mm -hmm. and be able to be a, a help to other people, and, right. and it's just uh, wonderful that they can do that. And you never want it to get there. No, you know, of course, Absolutely this is not, not the ideal situation. I just love that that God did reunite them and has kept, you know, built their family around that reliance on pursuing the Lord together mm -hmm. and the growth that they've seen, you know, is, is incredible. They've been very upfront about it right. yeah. and yeah, they very, don't hide very helpful to other people, yeah. helpful, helpful to their own kids because mm -hmm. they're both in ministry. <laughs> That's true. True. Um, I always get frustrated when I hear of a marriage that's at the point of crumbling and there's almost nothing you can do. It's been so long, you know, there's, mm -hmm. I'm, I just wonder in our culture if we can like make it okay to talk a little more about our marriage troubles, make it less taboo and more just to say, you know, we, we need community. We need the church around us. We need to not let it get that far. Yes. To get help, to get support, and ultimately to allow God to be that reconciler as only he is, you know, because he's creating our stories. I think we're seeing the same thing <clears throat> with our son-in-law, mm -hmm. willing to take past mistakes. Mm -hmm. Which he's learned from, and really is being a big help to other people. Right. Again, yeah. being upfront about it. Yeah. Let it. Let it. Let it be part of your life, and to help someone else with the same problems. Mm -hmm. I think nowadays that divorce. I hate to even say the word. Um, is fairly rampant in my family, mm -hmm. um, but uh, was. Is, is an easy cop-out to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We, from day one, just never considered it. Mm -hmm. It just was not a consideration. We're, we're gonna make this work. We're together for forever, and uh, it's just not gonna happen, no matter what. And I, I think having that kind of an attitude from the very beginning mm -hmm. um, is helpful. And, and people, mm -hmm. that those vows down in front of a bunch of people means something to us. Right. And uh, we took it very seriously and still do. Yes, that's true. It's, um, it is powerful when you realize that you are committed to make it work. And it doesn't have to be easy every season. It doesn't have to no. be smooth sailing, you know, but God can use our stories no matter what they are. I think we find when we have troubles, it's our own selfishness mm. shining out. You know? Shining. Yeah through that dirty lens, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and and she will remind me that there's some things that I shouldn't be doing or should, shouldn't be saying or whatever, you know, and, and, and I never had to say that to her, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So how has seeing other marriages changed your relationship with God? Well, we know that God is the center mm. of our marriage. Yes. And when we see other people with problems who don't even give God a second thought, we know that they don't have that strength between them. Mm -hmm. And it's not important to include him mm. when he has all the answers. <laughs> Amen to that. And, yeah. and sometimes it's very difficult to convince people mm -hmm. that God does have those answers. Right. But if they ask us, 
how long if we've been married that long, then we will we're not shy about telling them why our marriage is as strong as it is and what we do to make sure that it stays that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, and church in the center with Christ right. is the center of our. I mean, that's everything revolves around that mm -hmm. to the point where our kids knew that church was important. It wasn't, oh, are we going to go to church this morning? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> we, what time are we going to get there this morning? Right. Are we going to be there an hour early? <laughs> Nate tells me about the bathing suit church oh, and other crazy <laughs> churches you visited on family vacations. We always went. Yeah. We, yeah, we went to church. No matter where we were. Mm -hmm. We had some crazy experiences. We had a lot of fun on Sundays. It's not that yep. we didn't, but church was first. So how were you intentional while raising your kids and my future husband in sharing your either marriage experiences or just your example of seeking God first? I, I'm not sure that it was intentional that we tried to show that we just lived it. Okay. It just, you know, it, they knew that it was important. Mm -hmm. They knew it was important to, to be together to be together with other Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't, you know, how, I don't know how, I mean. Yeah. What do you think they thought about you as a couple? I don't think they ever had any fears mm -hmm. that we had problems that would upset them. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was growing up, once in a while my parents would have an argument and I was very passive, and it, and it scared me sometimes because I knew that people sometimes got divorces. Well, yeah. that was never, ever going to be an intent of my parents. Mm -hmm. But when they disagreed with something, you knew they were disagreeing with it, and it's just something that we didn't mm -hmm. want to have that mm -hmm. in them. Yeah. Try to, even when we corrected them for something, that we did it without other people mm -hmm. watching or seeing what's going on. But mm -hmm. no. So I think this is my last question, but the night before we were married, you told me something important. Do you remember? I think I remember. Yeah. I, I drew you aside uh -huh. and I said to you, you know that you don't have to do this tomorrow. Is that what you're talking yes. about? Yeah. Yes. And I said. So romantically, on the night before I was to be married, my father-in-law, future father-in-law says, you know, you don't have to do this. Right. But it's not, it's not too late to back out. Not That's too late right. to back out. You can out. do that. And we will not think any the less of you. Right. Nor will anybody here criticize you. Right. We would do this in love mm -hmm. because this is an important step. Right. I did the same thing to Matt. Sure. And um, I, I don't know if he remembers it as much as you do. I was surprised. You <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I've told that story to a couple people because I do think that in the snowball of getting engaged and getting married and the love that you feel and the hubbub of this event, you can lose yourself and forget that you're making a lifelong commitment right. in, uh, in front of God and all the people, you know, that you are committing to this. And it's so great to be like, yeah. And I've told a couple people, tried to be a little less. <laughs> drastic maybe but I said you know yeah if this isn't the thing get out don't get married no. um, and thankfully we do also have a lot of lovely couples that are mentoring us and discipling us in what it means to be a husband and wife and we are really committed that our marriage speaks God's gospel mm -hmm. because that's the Two broken people coming together to show a beautiful relationship right. is, you know, is God. It's the essence of how God uses us to, you know, be part of the church and be in unity, um, have families that are healthy and strong, and then to share the gospel with others. So, yeah, I love your testimony of serving together, and um, I hope our listeners today can hear a little bit about. You know, your marriage doesn't have to be perfect. No, um, it's not. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, there are stories of either separation or divorce that lead back to reconciliation because God can do it. Yes, He can. And so 
Yeah, if you're listening today and you're in a hard place, know that God can reunite. He can do miracles and He can work through your broken relationship to to make something beautiful. So um, we need more healthy biblical relationships that speak into our kids' lives and are attractive to those around us. Um, And thank you guys. May God bless you with many more years of marriage and use your testimony to thank you. those you meet in the future. You are an encouragement to us. You, you are. So. Mm-hmm. Thank you. To our listeners, thank you for spending your time with us. If you haven't yet connected with us online, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And be sure to check out our other McGregor Bodca- podcast channels. Just head over to TalkTruthPodcast.com for all the details. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a comment or feedback on the show, you can share it however you're listening to this. Thanks for listening, and remember to talk truth.